Yo, what it is, everybody? This is your boy, Mr. E. Boss of the Southside Bosses, coming to you here on Revolutionary Hour. This is the Revolutionary Hour. Well, we got another great show for you planned for this evening. Well, we're going to be diving into the difference between God's world and man's world. And what we can do in order to get out of man's world so we can be more than God's world. But that's just something y'all want to tune in to, turn up, and zone out on. You feel me? But before we do, we're going to ask you to hit that like, follow, and subscribe button on all your favorite streaming services. Whether it be Spotify, iHeart, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Tidal, whatever. Probably said Tidal already. <laughs> But you can find us on any streaming service that you put out there that you want to put out there. That's Revolutionary Hour. So just go ahead and hit that button. Like, follow, or subscribe. And then hit that share button so that all your family and friends and loved ones can get this edification as well. Because, you know, the more we get that can edify us and educate us, the more we can blossom, you feel me? So go ahead and tune up, turn up, and zone out. This is your boy, Mr. E, boss of the Southside Bosses here on Revolutionary and Hour. I'll keep BOSS Radio, Southside Bosses, its owners and associates take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guests. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of the site or the radio station, and opinions between talk show hosts may conflict. This site does not endorse anything as the truth that you will have to judge for yourself. But we try to speak the truth on the owner's behalf and reserve the right to question the supposed truth. And this time of misinformation, government controlled media, and government corruption, it is sometimes hard to get to the truth, but we must try. It is not our intention to libel, discriminate, make hate, or annoy anyone. We believe that it is our constitutional First Amendment right of free speech to voice our opinions and our duty to the Constitution and country to expose the truth. This site takes no responsibility for the opinions of others and the postings of comments in chat rooms or forum posts. Okay, so as you know for the title of what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about government. The reason why I wanted to call it Yahweh's government is because I want to show you the difference between Yahweh's government and man's made government. Okay? All right, you all right, everybody take a small break and get you some water. All right, so we're going to be talking about, first we're going to talk about the about Yahweh's government real briefly. Because I want you to understand that Yahweh's government is the complete opposite of man's government. Now, since man's government has dominated the world, we're going to be talking about how to, I'm going to be teaching you over the next, shoot, all your whole life on how to be able to deal with man's government so that you can stay free from man's government. Okay. Because as we're going to see, man doesn't have a government that Yahweh doesn't allow him to have. Okay. So first, let's go to the very beginning of it all. I want you to go to your scriptures and I want you to go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. All right. Now that you don't found it, I want Nasi to read. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 <coughs> And God said let us make man in our image after our after our likeness and let them have them domin have domin sign it out slowly four syllables dominion Long O. That first O is low. Long. 
Do, Dominion. Dominion. Good. Dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creep, creeping thing that cre- creepeth about the earth. Exactly. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And while I read this, y'all write and put, put this in your notes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Put this in your notes. Uh, just the scripture right now. But the scripture says, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Then God, Yahweh said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. That's the key word right there. Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl or the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over (coughs) all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, what does that word dominion mean to you? Joaquin? Do you know? No. Okay, now see, what about you? What does the word dominion mean? I don't know. Okay, but let's find out. Go ahead and open up a new tab on your computer or on a tablet. You know how to open up, go to something else. (coughs) And look up the word dominion, definition, in a whole new tablet. You're going to want to do it this way. That way you can copy and paste it into your notes. Look up the word dominion. Dominion, D O M I N I O N. All right, Jaquim, since uh, now you know what it means, I want you to read it to me. What does that word dominion mean? Uh, Did you find it? Supreme power or control. Supreme power or control. Now, we know that a government is supposed to have some kind of control, right? Yes. So it sounds like in the government, in the natural government on earth, this verse is saying God made us the ones with the supreme power over all of the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle and over all of the earth and every creeping thing that means everything on this earth we are the ones who are in control we are the ones that the top of the government yes sir it's, that's Speak. like the example on the definition it says man's attempt to establish the dominion uh domin- it's a long o at the beginning Dominium. There you go. Over nature. Right. That's what it says. That's because we got that from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 when Yahweh says that this is the reason why he is putting us in charge because we are like him. Okay. Now. I want you to go to. Now I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6 through 7. All right. Was you able to find it? Yes. All right. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. Joachim, you go ahead and read it this time. Uh-huh. S- and 7. Okay. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom 
to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the of Yahweh of host will perform this okay so Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 through 7 it starts off it says that for unto us a child is born now this is a prophecy and who do you think is prophesying now see who do you think is prophesying Yahweh. who Yahweh. no so a child is born when has Yahweh ever been a child uh, who what is the child that they're talking about Yahshua Yahshua is the child that they're prophesying about how do we know this unto us a son is given Yahshua is known as the son of Yahweh. Son of Yahweh, the son of God. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it says the next line, Jakim, after this says, "Unto us a son is given." Uh, what does it say after that? Wait, unto us a son is given, mm -hmm. uh, and. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And the government. And y'all should also have already written down Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 through 7. Should already have that in your notes. But yes, it says, and the government will be upon his shoulders. Now, whose government? Yahweh's government. This child will lead Yahweh's government. They go on to say that. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. This throne of David, once you really start studying, you'll find out that David was King David. Who know about King David here? King David was the second king of Israel. He uprooted the first king when Yahweh said that the first king was evil and he didn't want him to rule his kingdom anymore. So he led David to become the new king and every king after that has been a son of David. Whether a son of David, whether a grandson of David, whether a great grandson, whether a great great grandson. Okay. Yahshua is one of those sons of David. So it made him next in line to be king of the government that was established with Israel who shall take the government to the rest of the world. Okay? okay. So who's the leader of the of Yahweh's government? Uh, Yahshua. 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 Yahshua is the go is the is the leader of Yahweh's government. Now, in uh, a government, who's usually what? What's the title of the leader? The government. In the government, uh, who's the title? Of, what's the title? What do they call the leader? The president. And our government is a president. What about other uh, governments? Uh, emperor or king. Emperor or king. Well, okay. All right, so this next scripture is going to be our last scripture. And then we're going to get into the real meat and potatoes of what we actually came to study tonight. But the next scripture is Daniel chapter 2, verse 37. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2, verse 37. Daniel chapter 2, verse 37. Let me know where y'all get there. Oh, yeah. Daniel chapter 2 verse 37. Verse 37. Okay. You should already have written it down. Alright. After that. Now see. It's your turn to read. Alright. Go ahead and start reading. Thou oak. Thou oak. Go. 
Thou, O King, art a King of Kings, the for the for the God of Heaven ha, hath given thee a kingdom, a power, and strength, and glory. Okay, so what kind of government, Nasi, is 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 it referencing that God has given? What government? No, heaven is a place, and it does no. What government? What type of government that he has given? Uh, uh, power, power, strength, and glory. No. A kingdom. A kingdom. A kingdom. And who leads a kingdom? Jo a king. A king. So, when it says, you, O king, are a king of kings. This is a king that rules all kings, right? Right. And based off of the scripture we just got through reading in Isaiah chapter 9, who is that king? Yehoshua. Who? Yehoshua. Yahshua. Yehoshua. Depends on whatever dialect you choose. Yes, he is the king. Now, ask yourself this question. If he's the king of God's kingdom, who is the king of man's kingdom? Man? No. Yoshua is king of God's kingdom. So who's the king of... President? Huh? President? No. Yahweh? No. Yahweh is the God of his kingdom. Who's the king of this kingdom? Who rules all the kingdoms on the planet Earth? Y'all don't know? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so pull out your Bibles one more time. We're going to go to Ephesians. That's in the New Testament. It's towards the end. E-P-H-E-S-I-A-N-S. Ephesians. E-P-H. Chapter 6, verse 12. Let me know when you get there. I am so sorry, y'all. We're going to read that one. But we're going to go to the real one in just a moment. But yeah, that one is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Chapter 6, verse 12. All right, so everybody's there. So, Jaquim, so you, let's read this one. And let's please uh, speak up when we read it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against princi principalities. Principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of his world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what this says, and I want you to type this down. Uh, you could just put a dash right next to it because you wanted to make sure that it, it, it goes with this scripture. But that put a dash and put that we are a God's government. Excuse me, God's government and government could be G O V T. You don't have to type out the whole word. God's government, G O V T. Fight against man's government. This scripture says plain as day how God's government fights against man's government. So, and it says that there's wicked rulers um, in high places which rules this man's world. But there's one king 
over all of those kings of man world. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. And uh, that's 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And I'm sorry, I've been asking who is the king. I should have been asking y'all who is the God. So we're going to have Nasi uh, read the next one. I believe it's on Nasi, right? Yeah, yes. it's on this Nasi. So we'll have Nasi read the next one. And then we'll be able to see exactly uh, who that God is. All right. So since everybody got it now, let's go ahead and Nasi L. Go ahead and read that for me. And whom, the, and whom the God of this world hath blighted the minds of them which, be, which believe not, least the light of the glorious gossip of, of Messiah. Messiah. Messiah, who is the image of God, shall should shine into them okay and did it say oh so it didn't say the name enough but the god of this age or the god of this world is satan the adversary the enemy because if god is fighting if God if God's kingdom is fighting against man's kingdom, that would make man's kingdom the adversary, right? Mm -hmm. So the adversary will be the one that rules over this kingdom. So now we're gonna take a small break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about how, or we're gonna start the process of you learning how to get out of man's kingdom, so that you can only have to worry about living according to. Yahweh's law which we have already started to study how many laws are there 613 how many I want to say more but I just want to say 613 okay and why is it 613 because well, you know I mean I didn't do one break it up okay because um, 6 means man and 13 means evil, so saying men are evil, which we are. Exactly. We destroyed the earth. Exactly. Already. Exactly. And if uh, the law keeps us in tune with nature, so we won't destroy the earth or our body. So when we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, what we could be doing with our names that can help us keep us from um, actually having to worry about you know, uh, uh, getting stuck in man's kingdom, which is ruled by Satan or Satan, the adversary, right? All right, so when you come back, we'll touch on that. What if I told you there's a viable solution to the problem that so-called black people are facing, not only in the United States, but also around the world? Would you want to hear it? Yes? What I find is that more times than not, when faced with a solution, people tend to want it to be easy. But what if I warned you it was simple, yet needs constant work and action? Would you still be interested? On our podcast, Revolutionary Yahweh, we discuss these solutions instead of just complaining about the problems. We do this with the hope that our children can be better equipped to deal with the world that we are living in today. This is why you should be following our podcast by clicking the link above or finding us on your favorite streaming service. Revolutionary Yahweh is just that. Revolutionary. So, let's start making a future by learning from the past. Click that link. Follow our show. Make a change that'll last. Alright, so we're back and we're back at it. So, we're going to go ahead and keep uh, moving. We, were just, we got through talking about God's kingdom, you know, and that we know he has a government. In the form of a kingdom. And Yahshua is the king of that kingdom. Um, we all are kings of that kingdom. How do we know that we're kings of that of, our, of a kingdom, right? Psalms 82.6. Yeah. We are all gods. Because we're made in the image of the most high. But in man's kingdom, man has simply gotten greedy and want nothing but power. And wants to be able to control everybody. 
so they have tricked everybody, especially on uh, uh, here where we live at. Uh, like, okay, what would you say? Do we live in the United States or do we live in the North American continent? Mm-hmm. Or do we live in both? Both. We don't live in none of that. We don't live in anything. We live in a house. But we don't we live we don't live in the United States. And we live on the North American land continent. Okay, huh? not a physical thing to be in the the land is a physical thing that you can be on but the united states is not a physical thing that you can be in okay the united states has a government or is a government and that's it the united states is a government it is not a place that you can live in so we know it's a government and we know it's not God's government because if it was God's government, Yahshua would be king, right? Mm-hmm. But do we even have a king? What do we have? We have a president. We have a president, right? And who's the president right now? Uh, Joe Biden. You got to get quick, bro. You got to answer, boy. All right. Okay, Joe Biden is the president. All right. So, if Yahshua is a king, then this is not God's kingdom. This isn't Yahweh's kingdom. So, now we got to figure out how to get out of man's kingdom and get into God's, back into God's kingdom, right? right? Well, first thing you have to understand is what a law is. A law is something to prevent you from doing something that will hurt you, somebody, or somebody or, or property. Okay? Okay. If you can't have if you don't have a victim, you don't have a crime. If you don't have a damage to property, you don't have a crime. So tonight I want you to understand how they get you tricked into being punished for things that aren't crimes and it's through contracts you already have been signed up through a contract because when you was born i ended up i had to get y'all social security numbers and i didn't have to i felt like i had to i I felt like i was forced to get you social security numbers and to get you birth certificates okay you don't need neither one of those in order to live But they have made them to where you can hardly do anything without them. In man's kingdom, you can hardly do anything without them. But in God's kingdom, you don't need them. Okay? So, I'm going to be teaching y'all how to get out of those contracts. You don't have too many now. Y'all are actually consecrated. Y'all are in a more blissful state than I am. I have been signing contracts with the government since I was 16 years old. I'm going to teach you how to stay away from those contracts. Okay? Okay. But the first thing, you have to learn how to protect yourself when it comes to these contracts that they're going to be throwing at you that you feel like you have to have. You know, sometimes you (laughs) have to sign a contract. That's what life is. Life is a contract. It's a big contract. But you are supposed to benefit. Who knows what the word benefit means? Uh, the good side of God, or uh, yeah, the good side of God. What what um, is it good for? Move your hand. Uh, uh, what, say that again. Like, what's it good for? What's what good for? Like. Uh. Are you trying to say? These are useful. Are you trying to say that the good things that you get from dealing with something? Yes. Okay. Yes. The good the benefits are good things that you get from being part of something or dealing with something. Okay. You're supposed to get benefits 
from the government. You're supposed to benefit from that, but you don't. But if you find a contract that does benefit you, like let's say you want to rent an apartment because you want a place to stay, don't you benefit from that? Yeah. Having a place to stay? Okay, so if you have to sign a contract, then you will learn you will need to learn how to sign that contract, okay? So, how do you sign any kind of contract or it, it, or any document okay first let's look at your the way that they're going to be presenting your name in front of the screen you should see a picture of my license right yes okay spell my spell my name according to the license e E, uh, wait, E-R-I-C-D-E-V-O-N-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Do you think they spelled my name right? No. No. Why? It's all uppercase. It's all what? All the letters are uppercase. All the letters are uppercase. Every last one of the letters in there are uppercase, but when you got taught how to write your name in school, how did you get taught how to write your name? Since it's a proper noun, uh, the first letter has to be capital and the rest has to be lowercase. Exactly. Since you are a proper noun, not all the letters are capital. Only the first letter of each name. E-D-W. That's the only thing that's supposed to be capitalized. But yet they got all my letters capitalized. From what you have learned, what do you think that means, Nasi? Well, how about you, Joaquin? One of y'all remember? What's the question? What that means when they, you, when they have all your le letters of your name capitalized. And then... Neither one of y'all remember? No. It's not me. No, oh, it's not you. Who is it? No one. No one? It is called a corporation. No, it's uh, yes. Um, it is called it's a corporation. Law says that in order to be able to t uh, figure out who you're talking about when it comes to a live human, you make the first letter of each name capital, the rest lowercase. While in a corporation, every letter is is capital. So, is that my driver's license? No. No. Okay. Go to the next picture. Now that you know that. The debit card. I'm sorry, what? The debit card one. The debit card, yes. That is a debit card. Do you see my name on that debit card? Yes. Is no. that my debit card? No. No. Because it's spelled the same. It is spelled the same. What is wrong with it? All of the case. Right. So, since this isn't my debit card, I had to sign... For the debit card, I had to sign. Go back to the, the license. Do you see my signature on the license? Yes. Yeah. Did you see my signature on that license? Yes. Okay. So, you obviously I had to sign for it, right? Right. Obviously, I had to con sign a contract with them. They allowed me to get this on behalf of the corporation called Eric Devon Williams. So, that's a corporation? It's a corporation. This card is made for a corporation. And they are allowing me the benefit of using this card. But, is it a benefit? No. Why is it a benefit? It's not your name. No. It's my money. And I'm putting my money or my currency into this account that this card allows me to access. So, if it's my money in this account, how am I benefiting from me having this card? Why don't they just give me my money? 
Why do I have to go through a corporation to get my money? Essentially, what's happening is I'm giving my money to a corporation and asking them, can I get it? Yeah. Because what if I go to the ATM to get some money out and the card doesn't work? What if I'm in the line at the grocery store trying to pay for food and the card doesn't work? Can I get my money? No. 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 Guess who I got to go to? I got to go back to the bank and talk to them about an account that is promised to a corporation so I can get my money. So, no, that is not nowhere near being free. That's not freedom. Right? So, when I signed, I should have signed a certain way. And I'm going to show y'all that certain way right now. Okay? All right. So, now that everybody got their notebook, I want y'all to, first, I want to show y'all something. Now, see? Do you see that small, look up here, look up here, look at this. Do you see that small writing at the top? Yeah. First of all, this is my debit card. Do you see that small writing at the very top? Here. Oh. I want you to read it out loud. Property of Davy of Davy Federal Credit Union. Must be returned upon demand. Must be returned upon demand. That means that once they say, give me, they, give me this car. That means I got to take this car to them. This ain't even mine. And it's, it's telling you that on the car that this is not yours. It's property of the banks. But this got my money on it. Don't it? It has my currency in it, right? Right. No. I don't have any currency. Nothing belongs to me because I gave it to the corporation. Huh. I gave it to the corporation. So since I gave it to the corporation, <coughs> since I gave it to the corporation, it's not mine. And if they take this card and don't give me the currency, I'm just out of there. I'm out of luck. So, in order to be able to protect yourself from things of that nature, from happening to you, we're going to start working on that. So, right now, I want to show y'all how to make a, how to sign whenever you sign your name. So, first, I want you to go to the third line on, on, the, on the piece of paper that you want. Write the word signature and then a colon and then write a, a draw a long line up on the, like at the bottom. Like how, if you, you know how it is when you sign. Okay. Signature, a colon, and a long line. So is where you can practice that. Spell it, please. Spell it, please. Spell what? Signature? S-I-G-N-A-T-U-R-E. And a colon, which is the two dots on top of each other. Sword and nature in it. Huh? That's sword and nature in it. It sure does. Hmm, I wonder if there's a correlation. Do you put an X right here? Some people do put an X, but you don't. Okay. I didn't, uh, if I didn't say put an X, don't put an X. Now, see, did you, are you ready? S I G N A T U R E colon and a long line up underneath. Put tra yes, trace the blue line. All right. So, what you're going to want to do is whenever you see, whenever you have to sign, that's what you're seeing right there. That's that's what you're seeing on a piece of paper, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to say either sign or signature colon. With a long line. Before you put your name down there. You're going to go to the line above signature. Go to the line above signature. And write the words without prejudice. 
without prejudice. W I T H O U T P R E J U D I C E. W I T H O U T without P R E J U D I C E. Prejudice. Okay. Without prejudice. Alright. So, after you put without prejudice at the top, what you're going to do at the bottom on the line is you're going to write out your name. But you're going to write it out like this. First name. Write your first name. Just print. Print. Your first name. Okay. Dash. Your middle name. That's a dash, not a slash. Like a minus sign. A dash like a minus sign. Then... Your second name, your middle name. Yes. You're going to put a semicolon after your middle name, no spaces. And you're going to put your last name. That should be your first name. A minus sign, your middle name, a colon, and your final name, your last name. Colon? Colon, the two dots. Oh. What's the okay. Now, after that, let me know when you finish. Yes, I'm done. Comma. No, right behind it. Comma, right behind the last name. Uh, comma. Right. Let me show me what you got. Okay, so put a comma and then write the word agent. A G E N T. Agent. Then put a parenthesis. Put a parenthesis, and then you're gonna put or beneficiary. Close parenthesis. Or beneficiary. B E N E F I C. I A R Y Beneficiary B E N E F I C I A R Y Now up underneath the name up underneath that line that you drew, you will put UCC one minus three zero eight UCC one dash three zero eight comma UCC one dash two zero seven one zero zero one dash two zero seven. All right, so there, everybody got that. Mm -hmm. 
UCC 1-308 comma UCC 1-207 at the bottom. This is how you assign your name every time. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. You you said two of them. There's two of them. Both of them. UCC one dash three o eight, comma, UCC one dash two zero seven. You'll put both of them. Now, what this does is it activates your rights. It, it, it preserves your rights, excuse me. UCC 1-207 says without prejudice, and that means that which is so clearly stated or distinctly set forth that there is no doubt as to its meaning. What meaning? What UCC 1-308. A party that with explicit reservations of rights performs or promises performance. This means. That I am protecting my rights no, no matter what happens. My rights will not be taken away from me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once your rights are taken away from you, you become a slave. You're owned. You're a corporation. And what the United States Corporation tries to do is take your rights and replace them with privileges. Okay? Okay. No, they didn't give you any rights. God gave you rights. When you were born, God gave you all the rights you would ever need. It's up to you to know what those rights are and to protect them and not give them away. Once you give them away, you can't. it's hard to get them back. But I'm going to at least show you how to keep them. Okay. This is life or death. You could either be a slave or you could be a free person. I hope you choose to be free people. All right, that'll be it for tonight. But I do want y'all to do every one thing every morning, and I want you to get a little book after you pray. Get get a little book, and I want you to write down every day your signature, just like that. And I want you to put a date on it. And at the end of the week, I'm going to ask you for it. Tomorrow, we're going to, uh, you're going to read me those affirmations and those scriptures that we had. Okay? You can close it. So what about the yellow pages? Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't. No, yeah. we'll take that back in there. All right. But yeah. All right. So remember that and practice that signature thing every day. And I put a date on it so that I know that what date you did what date you did them on, okay? okay. Alright. Love you, that is it. Y'all can now enjoy the rest of y'all evening. And see, this is what it all boils down to on our podcast, Revolutionary Hour on BOSS Radio. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share us on your favorite streaming service. Spotify, iHeart, iTunes, and more. This is the revolutionary hour.